Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today we're determining the GOAT, the yeah. greatest of all time when it comes to ETFs between VOO and SCHD. Which one is the GOAT? And I put a poll up on my community page there where you can go vote and you can let me know what you think. But, you know, when it comes to sports, some people think it's it's this guy, and I'm like, ah, he plays a regional sport and he, and he doesn't kickball good. So it can't be him. So no, I'm sorry, it can't be him. And then they bring up this guy. And I'm like, well, he's good looking, right? But then, did you ever have you ever seen his statue before? Look, <laughs> no, it can't be him. You can't have a statue like that, even if you kickball good. So then I bring up this guy, right? Unassuming, moppy haired, five foot seven, thing of beauty. Look at that. That's the goat. And there's no poll for this. I just determined it. That is the goat when it comes to sports. Anyway, push that aside. We're focused on investing. So. When it comes to investing, I'm actually a GOAT as well. I'm the Ibex GOAT. Look at this. This is me, 2022. Look at me, navigating that wall, trying to figure things out. But uh, it's not, you know, it's hard. It's really hard. Look at that. And and the problem is it's like a video game. And uh, the feds come to get me. So every now and then, have you seen this? This is actually happens in nature. The, the the eagle swoops in and picks up the GOAT and it drops the GOAT into oblivion. The, the GOAT goes tumbling down the side of the mountain. The bottom of the mountain, there it is. The eagle eats you sometimes. So that's kind of what has been going on. But anyway, today I want to determine uh, which of these two is the best in my community. So go rock that vote over there on that page. And uh, I'll give you my opinion too as we re review these two. So if that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Boop. So before we jump into more GOAT references, let's take a look at VOO and SCHD. And to do that, I'm gonna use Seeking Alpha. I am an affiliate of Seeking Alpha and there are affiliate links down below. If you like what you see here, there's some nice big discounts down in the description below. But uh, I find myself using Seeking Alpha all the time, whether it's just to grab basic information on stocks and ETFs that I like, or to look at analysis by other people down here or news on those stocks and ETFs. So I like it a lot. I find myself using it literally every single day, but again, I like this kind of stuff. So anyway, back to VOO and SCHD. So let's do a quick review and talk through these. So when it comes to a VOO, this is the Vanguard. It's from Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Now, this one does include REITs, and I think that's important to understand. And VOO holds large cap growth in value stocks in proportion to their market caps. So when I look at this right here, I see an expense ratio of 0.03%. So that's extremely low. That means $3 for every $10,000 invested. So quite affordable to invest in this. They're not going to rip a bunch of fees out of you. And they do pay a quarterly dividend. And uh, one of the, you know, I always think it's interesting when I look at the yield. This is one of the uh, easy ways if you want to invest into VOO. As this yield approaches 2%, you'll start seeing more and more people invest in the VOO. Now, I still think it's great just to dollar cost average into things like VOO and SCHD and just set it up and forget it, especially as retail investors. But that is a little bit of an indicator. As you see yield approach 2%, maybe that means we're closer to a, a good buying position for that. So anyway, assets, 750 billion nearly. So it, it's a huge fund. A lot of people invest into VOO. And if we look at the one-year performance for VOO, you're going to see down 14% over the last 12 months. So unimpressive. It's been a tough 2022 compared to Schwab here, the U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, SCHD, down just 2.5% over the last year. So much more impressive. It's really hung on a lot better. And that has everything to do with the way they pick their stocks for this fund. So much, much more selection going into how we set up our, our stocks in SCHD. So their goal here is to track as closely as possible the total return of the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index. So what does that mean? Well, they're focused on the quality and sustainability of dividends, right? And uh, they're excluding REITs. It's important to understand. And they're basing everything on some financial ratios here. So it picks its stocks based on four factors. First, dividend growth. So it requires a minimum of 10 years of dividends, and then it ranks it by growth. Two, the second factor, free cash flow to total debt. Three, return on equity. Four, expected forward yield. So you combine all those different factors and our stock selection is going to be quite different than what we're going to get to get over there with VOO. But overall, we've got an expense ratio here that's double that of VOO at 0.06. So $6 per $10,000 invested. So still quite reasonable 
Not a lot of expense ratio there that we have to worry about. Uh, yield, quite a bit higher at 3.22%. So over double the yield. And, uh, but a much smaller fund as well, just, just 40 billion. I'll take the 40 billion, but uh, a smaller fund overall. So now if you are focused on those dividends, SCHD might be a better choice for you. But I do have the belief, you know, if, you, if you're if you a VOO person and you want to sell 10 shares every single quarter to act like a dividend, you can do that as well. So this isn't a huge factor for me because I'm kind of in that camp where you can manage that yourself if you would like to. Now, if we look at the holdings breakdown, I think this is an important question that we can ask ourselves is, would you like to own the 10, the top 10 stocks that are in either one of these ETFs? So in this case, SCHD focuses on financials with over 20%, then industrials, and then technology is third, right? And if we look at their top 10 holdings, you're going to see, well, we got Merck, Amgen, IBM, PepsiCo, Lockheed Martin, Cisco, Pfizer, Home Depot, Texas Instruments, and Coca-Cola running out the top 10, and that makes up 40% of the fund. So pretty well balanced overall with 103 holdings in there. Now, as I said, because of their focus on dividends, you're going to see dividend growth history pretty substantial every single year going from uh, 2012 all the way up to 2021 so quite impressive overall when you look at how they've grown this dividend using this stock selection uh, strategy and if we compare those holdings to VOO we're going to see something very different right so let's scroll down and take a look we're going to see the holdings breakdown here is focused on technology first moved right to the top healthcare financials consumer cyclical and industrials all the way down here in fifth position uh, but the top 10 holdings are all the big boys that you know and love, right? Things like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, Tesla, Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, United Health Group, Exxon, and Johnson & Johnson round out the top 10. And that's 26% of the fund. So not as dominant, but that's because they have 500 different holdings in here. So which one? If you think about the top 10 holdings, very different compared to uh, SCHD. Now it has had some dividend growth over the years, but you can kind of see that stagnated over the last three years. So uh, as we correct here, will this uh, continue to grow? I would expect it to, but again, uh, when's the best timing to get into something like VOO versus SCHD? Well, that's a choice you have to make for yourself. So let's go back over and take a look at charting just to kind of get an idea of where these two stand. So we have, we have VOO on here right now. We're gonna add a comparison. We're gonna add SCHD and uh, compare these two. So. Again, if we look over the course of the last year, well, you're going to see that SCHD has definitely outperformed VOO during this period in time. And that's price return. We can also go to total return, and we're going to see there's even a little bit of a larger separation, again, because SCHD pays out a higher dividend yield. So combine that all together, and over the last year, SCHD is actually up, which is great to see, right? We've had this little rebound recently, and SCHD has done a good job performing well, whereas VOO, all those tech stocks that are in there have gotten hit really hard, down 12.8% still over the last year. So which one would you choose? So when I look at this chart and we see SCHD dominating VOO in the current market, you know, it makes me think about their stock selection activity and how they go through this and that it's really paying off, right? A lot less price volatility compared to VOO. Even though it's only 100 stocks versus 500 stocks, it's really paying off because of that criteria that they use. So uh, yeah, in this market, SCHD is where you wanted to have your money in the past 12 months, but now we're headed into the future. So consider a period, I'll show you a chart here, uh, during the bull market run from 2014 till the end of 2021, right? And in this case, VO will return nearly 40% more. And even if you put the dividend back in, you're gonna see that VO is still outpaced SCHD by 25%. So, you know, with more tech stocks, VO looks to be the better option in a bull market. So I guess what is coming next may be the best question to ask, right? We've got higher interest rates right now and QT coming, right? Quantitative tightening. And in that case, I, I would prefer a basket of value stocks, which is exactly what SCHD offers, you know, or do you feel like we're ready to go on the next bull run, right? So uh, I don't know. In summary, we got VOO, 500 stocks, lower yield, which means less tax, more exposure to growth stocks and emerging technology for that next big bull run. Um, maybe just a better choice for a younger investor. Uh, whereas SCHD, you know, 100 screened value stocks, higher yield, less volatility. 
but is that yield as attractive with fixed income on the rise, right? You have that option and it's really gonna be protecting your asset. So why take the risk? What do you think? So the moment of truth is here, which one is the GOAT ETF? And in my opinion, it's really darn close. I own both. And if anybody ever wants to argue, I can always argue the other side. Cause again, I think they're both excellent ETFs to buy and hold forever. But uh, for my particular age and financial position, I would probably lean toward SCHD right now just to protect my investment a little bit more at this point in time. But uh, you can't go wrong with either one of these. So please go over to my uh, community page and vote and let me know. We'll let the people speak. Rock that vote. Anyway, any questions on any of this, please ask down below. I'd love a comment. I'll talk to you really soon. Have a great day. See ya. Mm-hmm.